Good morning, everybody. Ryan here. We are out at my place, and it's about 8 o'clock in the morning and 9 degrees out, so this day should be a little interesting. But um, we're having an issue down here with the waterer. So you might be able to notice that there's no water in it. Hey, hon. She's a little thirsty. So the water between the barnyard and the steer lot basically is not getting any water. So earlier this year, um, typically what I'll do throughout the summer is I'll turn the hydrant on here to make sure that the pipes are just flushed out because the well here on this farm has ochre in it, which is essentially just rust. And that rust can get in the pipes and it can clog them over time. Now, the water line here, Dad said, was buried in 1980. So that's 40 years that ochre's been building up in the pipes. And um, it's been okay. The flow down here's been good. Um, but the summer, usually what I'll do is when I'm mowing the lawn, I'll turn that hydrant on just to kind of flush the line. Um, and the first time I did it, you know, it was, everything was normal. You know, everything was fine. The second time uh, when I was mowing lawn, the hydrant was slow to start and there was plenty of pressure over at the water yet. That wasn't an issue. So I didn't think too much of it. I just let the hydrant sit and run and it actually improved. Um, the pressure came back and everything was fine and dandy. Well, two weeks later, uh, I came through again and turned the hydrant on and it was just a dribble. Um, that time, again, the water still had plenty of pressure and there wasn't any issues there but the hydrant was, I left it on all day and it didn't improve. Um, so I just kind of left it since the last time I checked it was in the fall, you know, nothing really changed. The water was fine. It was still getting plenty of pressure, but the hydrant was still just a dribble. Well now, um, after we got my cows down into the steer lot um, and they've been in here for a while, I've been paying close attention to the water and it's been slowing down. And right now it's really just a drip. So Schmidt's Plumbing is going to be here um, very soon and they are going to be digging up the water line where it comes to a T and splits off into the uh, where one goes to the hydrant and one goes to the water and uh, we're thinking that when the water slows down at that T it might be depositing ochre there at least over 40 years you'd think that that might be a symptom. So we opened up the gate here to let the cows go down to the pasture, but they're still trying and trying to get it out of the water. Dad just got here. Schmidt's plumbing should be here before long. open that hydrant or what? Yeah, I did. Okay, because I lost the water here. Going somewhere. Can't feel anything on a hydrant if I'm hitting that can you do it? That's what makes me think of why that oak could come loose from in the fight. Mm-hmm. Went down and jammed that key up. We trenched the pipe all in all the way down to here. With a trencher? With a trencher. But then here, I'm pretty sure they used the back hole and made a bigger pit.
power should be getting through. I just pulled the breakers that go down to the chicken house because um, the heater in the water and the power for the electric fences in the hog or chicken house down there. So it comes through the barn. So by pulling the breakers, the line that goes from the chicken house over to the water is supposedly right alongside the water pipe or pretty close to it. So we want to make sure that these are unplugged. you guys have a jackhammer for rent for the front of a skid loader? Yep. Yeah. Is it on hand? Okay. Um, we'll probably be up here in a little bit to come get it. Okay. All right. Sounds good. All right. We'll be up in about 10 minutes. Thanks. Bye. Okay. Um, when you get there, fire up the JCB and let it warm up. They need a... They need a jackhammer because their excavator can't do it. The ground's too hard and froze. are on. Seems kind of like a loose fit to me, but JCB would have been a lot easier, a lot more simple, but we got here and tried to move it and the tracks are frozen up. So yesterday or two days ago was particularly muddy. I tried cleaning the tracks out with the shovel. Um, it was pretty much entirely caked in there. I feel like after some of that froze, I might be able to knock some more of that off now, but um, yeah, it's currently frozen down. So they're calling for like 50 degrees tomorrow. I think that I'll be able to move it then, need to wash it out, but that cat's going to have to make do for now. The over here still the side, on. the frost is a little thinner, so he's able to get through this. Well, once you hit that gravel, I can't get through it. Yeah.
chances we get super lucky and you puncture through whatever's plugging it just doing this. Stranger things have happened. Hard to say. I'm hitting something hard right now, whether it's that stuff built up in it or not. While we were gone, they were able to dig down and find the T. So they cracked it open and ran the snake through up the line. Um, they turned the water on and off up in the pit up here, just by the house. And uh, we still weren't getting anything through it. So they ran the snake up through and they went up so far until they hit what seems to be a blockage. So we think that the water line tees off and goes into the barn someplace. We're not totally sure where that's at, um, but we're thinking that might be causing an issue. So what they're doing is now that they measured back how far the snake went up through the line, uh, Dad is taking the jackhammer and jackhammering down through the gravel because that's where they were really having issues digging through um, with all that compaction and the frost. So Dad's loosening it up and then they're gonna come up with the excavator and start digging down and try to find the line again and see what's going on. Uh, there and break it open, see if we can run the snake down either way and just work from there, see where the problem's at.
Oh, hey, power. We'll check my plug in. You turn the power off there, right? Oh, that's right. You really should ask Brett. Oh, me, yeah, you go down there, it looks like somebody had explosive diarrhea. I gave you a little something. <laughs> yeah, you got some shit splattered. I couldn't around. move it fast enough. <laughs> So we got an air tank and loaded it up with a bunch of air at Rockville and we brought it back. They hooked it up to the line down by the water and it turns out that negative pressure back was enough to free it up. They said that they uh, hooked it up and you could hear the air running into it and it just took a while to build up pressure. Now Travis and I actually tried to put some air through it but we didn't have a fitting on it to really build up the pressure in that line um, to give it real good feedback and we didn't get anything yesterday so um, did we have to dig up those two pits no um, should we have dug up the one probably because it got us down to that T um, and allowed us to flush that out all nice and good so problem solved I started building up pressure and you could hear it one going anywhere. We're like, oh boy, and then all of a sudden it must have let loose and blew it out. Really? Thank God. Must have just took a little bit to fill that void volume up in that line and then once it finally got enough pressure, it blew it out. That's still disconnected off the water, is it? No, that's hooked back up. We're gonna put a coupling on here. Oh, okay. And that's flush this. Yeah. Go ahead and turn it on. Yep. Sounds like water's doing something. I like it's coming. I can hear it hissing. Uh, the air tank, when you put the pressure to it, it ran up about, you could hear it going in. You know, it got down to about 80 pounds. You know, it Yeah, we got a full screen. What you do? Yep. Oh God. Turn it off. No. Keep let it, yeah, just let it run. It's it's brown. Oh, it's it's out. Out. oh yeah. They don't get any much clearer. Huh? Want a knife, Lord? Huh? Want a utility knife? You got a color of the drinking water system in the house. You need to be able to drink it. down. They just left with the Bobcat. They are taking the jackhammer back and they're bringing the Bobcat back with the bucket because the bucket is currently uh, in front of the JCB, which since that's currently locked up, um, we can't move it or even get to the bucket. So tomorrow, once it warms up, I'm gonna take the JCB out or maybe consider taking it over Rockville and giving it another wash. Um, 
it's just it's been difficult with all the freezing and thawing that we've had um trying to keep those tracks clean and they they got really bad um the second day that travis and i were putting bales out so tracks are tracks are good um but they also have their drawbacks i mean they can freeze up like that uh, for a lot of guys with heated shops, it's nice because it's not as big of an issue. You know, you can just pull them into the shop and not really worry about them so much. Um, whereas with us, it freezes in here. So, whatever. At least we got the waters fixed. Cows got water again. That hydrant down by the chicken house hasn't worked, been working very well. Or wasn't working very well. Hasn't been working at all recently. And, I went to turn it on and it just had a whole bunch of brown ochre in it and there was like just a, like a clob of stuff that came out so there's lots of pressure down there now which is a great thing i'm gonna put the door back over the pit and we should be good for this video anyway thanks for watching guys be sure to check out all of our other videos be sure to like comment and subscribe and be sure to check us out on facebook instagram twitter and snapchat Oh, how farms work. And with that, I'll see you next time.